Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be doing a quick one. This is going to be a tutorial on how to create a shockwave effect. So this is what it's going to look like when we're done. So as you see, we click and it creates a pulsing shockwave effect. So this is actually a really easy effect to create. So let's go ahead and start a new frame. And figure out how it's done. Okay, so we're gonna need, first things first, we're gonna need a backdrop because we need something to distort. I have downloaded this um, Starscape back backdrop and that's what I'm gonna use, but you can obviously use whatever you want. And this will distort anything on the layer that this object is on, this shockwave object. So here is how we do it. Right click and insert an active object. This is going to be the shockwave object. So name it as such, shockwave. Now all we're gonna do to create a shockwave is give this object a shader. So shaders, you can apply them to objects on the display options. Go down to effect where it says none, click that and select edit. We are looking for the lens shader. So double click on that when you find it. Now we need to give this thing two alterable values. We're gonna give it a value called coef. That's gonna be for the coefficient of the shader. And we're gonna give it a scalar object. Or sorry, a scalar alterable value. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do here, as you see, um, if you click back on the shader parameters, you'll see that the effect has these parameters here. And you can figure out the name of each parameter that you're gonna to need to type in um, in parentheses. So coef is going to be f coef and base is f base. So what we're gonna do is slowly modify the coefficient value, which is gonna blend this explosion. And then we're going to also expand it and eventually destroy it. So let's go ahead and start coding. If we're gonna do this on a mouse, we'll say user clicks with a left click. We are going to create the shockwave object and we can create it anywhere because we are now going to give it the X and Y position of the mouse. So go to position, set X position. That's gonna be X mouse. And then go to position, set Y position. And we're gonna make that the Y mouse. Uh, make sure you do create the object first so this won't work. Okay, now we need an always event. We are always going to add to scalar 0 0.1. And then we are always going to set the alterable value of coef to itself times 0 0.95, okay? Then we are going to set the uh, scale of this object to the value of scalar, so grab that, and one for maximum quality. And lastly, go to the object and under effect, select set effect parameter. Now, if you remember, it was called F coef. You need to capitalize that C. And we're gonna set the value of F coef to the value of coef. All right, go back to the shockwave object and under the coef value, set it to something higher than three or higher than zero, such as three. Um, that's because essentially the coefficient is the value of how intense this uh, distortion effect is, if it hits zero, the distortion will be gone. So we're going to decay this value smoothly down to zero. All right, now we wanna find out if, I don't know, um, find out if the value of scalar is greater than two. And if that's true, we're gonna destroy this object. So we're gonna need to play around with that a bit to get it just right, but this is essentially what we wanna do. The reason we're destroying it is because we don't wanna have these infinitely scaling objects that'll eat up your processing until you, you're just, your computer crashes or the program will run terribly. Um, all right, one more thing. Click on the shockwave object and we do not wanna create it at start. Let's run and test. Okay, that was pretty lame. Let's go ahead and modify it. Let's change this a little bit. Instead of uh, finding out the scalar is greater than two, Let's do it this way. We don't want it to exist after the coefficient value is essentially zero. Um, now, since it always approaches zero, it'll actually never get there. So just find out if it's lower than like 0 0.1. If that's the case, then we're gonna destroy our object. 
And as we see, that's actually worked pretty well. We can even make that smaller so it's even smoother, such as 0 0.01. Yeah, that was a very smooth transition. Very smooth. Okay, all that's left now is to add some art for the shockwave because we obviously don't want it to be a diamond. I've made some art in the program called Krita. You can download that for free. Uh, they have an explosion tool and it's pretty good. It's free and it's comparable to uh, like GIMP or Photoshop. So that's how I did this. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in some art. Okay, I've imported some art for this. Um, now what I'm going to do is after it's created, the um, shockwave effect, we are gonna go ahead and set the animation. Uh, so go to change animation frame, and we're gonna make that random three. Just put, uh, randomize the number of frames you have. This will give us a different picture and a different shockwave randomly so it's not kind of it won't look as generic or consistent it'll make it look more dynamic so let's test it now it's a little fast I don't know why that's so fast let's small that let's slow that down instead of adding 0 .0, 0 0.0 let's add 0 0.01 to the scaler there we go much better As you see, one of these um, one of these shockwaves actually looks a little flat. Um, that's because it's it's going to ba be based on the value of the picture. So if you have a very consistent value, it's not going to have a curvature. It won't be as ripply. So make sure you have a lot of uh, highs and lows and the colors there. A lot of darks, a lot of lights. Um, but yeah, that is how we do it, guys. That is a shockwave effect, and that's how you make it in Click Team Fusion 2.5. Um, as I said, definitely recommend checking out Krita. It's a good free program for doing art, and you can use that to make all kinds of cool effects for your programs. All right, guys, hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And as always, I recommend you join my Discord channel. Lots of people there willing to help you out. Until next time, guys, have a fantastic day.